The bench press is one of the most effective exercises for developing and strengthening the upper body, primarily the chest and triceps. However, despite its effectiveness, it's also the one exercise that lifters seem to have the most trouble with, primarily due to shoulder pain during or after the movement. And in many cases, this is simply a result of various tweaks that need to be made in your bench pressing form. In this video, I'll go through exactly what those tweaks are so that you can minimize your risk of injury over time and get back to pain-free bench pressing as soon as possible. The first mistake is something that most people are aware of yet tend to have trouble properly implementing. Whenever we're benching, we want to have our shoulder blades retracted or pinched together as if you were going to pinch a pencil between those blades. This both enables the head of our humerus to properly track throughout the press and it enables us to better activate the chest by minimizing the involvement of the front delts. If we don't have the shoulder blades retracted, what actually tends to happen is the upper arm will round forward which can irritate some of the rotator cuff tissues in the front of the shoulder. So what you want to do is before you press, depress your upper traps by bringing your shoulders down and away from your ears, and then pinch your shoulder blades together. Then maintain this tightness by actively squeezing your shoulder blades together as you perform the movement and avoid the mistake of opening up the shoulder blades and losing tightness at the bottom or as you push up. If you struggle with this, I suggest trying this out. Raise your hands with your thumbs pointed out like so. Then rotate your arms outwards while squeezing your shoulder blades together and focus on really feeling the squeeze in your rhomboids right in the middle of your back. The feeling you get here is the exact feeling you want to achieve while performing the bench press. So what you can do is perform that exercise immediately before setting up for the press and then practice maintaining this feeling when benching by using lighter weight and then building up towards your working weight. Another common benching mistake that can cause shoulder pain is pressing with a completely flat back. Although most people won't need an exaggerated arch as seen with powerlifters, you do want to ensure that there's some arch present in your upper back. And the reason for this is similar to what we saw with retracting your shoulder blades, as a slight arch in the upper back places the glenohumeral joint in an externally rotated, safer position meaning that it effectively avoids putting your shoulders in a dangerous internally rotated position at the bottom of the press, which commonly occurs when pressing with a completely flat back. But to properly implement this while avoiding injury, note that you're not simply arching your lower back. What you want to do instead is arch your upper back by retracting your shoulder blades as we previously discussed and then raise your chest up towards the ceiling which will naturally create space between your back and the bench, which you then want to maintain as a solid base of support for your press. One of the most common mistakes people make with the bench press is touching the bar too high on their chest at the bottom position, which is usually done as a result of excessively flaring the elbows out at a 90 degree angle while pressing the bar straight up and down. This is detrimental because as shown in this 2016 paper that analyzed shoulder pain in the bench press, touching the bar too high on the chest with the elbows flared actually increases the compressive forces at the clavicle and increases the net torque placed on the shoulder, and therefore increases the likelihood of shoulder injury over time. So what you want to do is instead realize that the bar path of your bench press shouldn't be straight up and down. It should actually start above your shoulder, come down to around the level of your sternum or nipple height, and then curve diagonally back towards the starting point. And to achieve this without harming your shoulders, you need to tuck your elbows to roughly a 75 degree angle such that your elbows remain closer to the body and more or less directly under the bar throughout each rep. This will not only lead to a safer press, but a stronger one as well. A harder to catch yet very common mistake is not properly aligning the elbows during the press, meaning that the elbows are not in line with the hand and not stacked under the bar, which creates unnecessary torque on both the elbow and the shoulder joint. And to fix this, there's two things you need to do. If your elbows are unaligned when viewed from the front or back, then the problem is likely with your grip width. 
For instance, gripping the bar too wide, as shown here, will cause the forearms to be misaligned. And as stated in this review paper, analyzing the shoulder joint is problematic since it increases the demand placed on the rotator cuff. And on the other hand, gripping the bar too narrow will also cause the forearms to be misaligned and will turn it more into a triceps dominant movement. Thus, you want to play around with your grip width until you find the width that feels best and enables your elbows to remain stacked under the bar. Now if your elbows are unaligned when viewed from the side, then it's likely that you're over tucking your elbows too close to your sides when you press. So to fix this, you simply want to adjust the angle of your elbows during the press by flaring them out a little more such that they remain relatively underneath the bar. So as you can see, the bench press is a lot more technical than it may appear, but videotaping yourself performing the bench press from the side and from the back can help you visually see these small errors and correct them and it's something I'd highly recommend you do. But regardless, try implementing the tips I mentioned as they lead to not only a safer press but a stronger one as well. So to sum the video up, here are the main points to keep in mind. As I always try to emphasize, it's absolutely vital that you pay close attention to how you're performing each of your exercises in order to both prevent injuries over time and to progress faster. What's up dudes and girls, we're here in the gym with a single exercise tutorial. Today we're going to be handling the seated dumbbell press. Now this exercise is predominantly going to be working the deltoideus, or deltoids. Three heads of the deltoids are going to be the anterior, which is the front portion, lateral head, which is the side, and posterior, which is the back portion of the deltoids. Now a press is essentially going to work all three heads of the deltoid. It's going to be the front, and as you rotate slightly to the side, and then for stabilization, the posterior head is going to be working um, at the top position. So we're going to be using the seated position here with the back rest. And got the weights. I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to perform some reps so you get a good idea of what it should look like. And then we're going to go over what you shouldn't do and, you know, some of the things you should do or keep in mind. Feeling pretty good. Already hitting a little fatigue in there. So I'm just gonna stay in this position so you can see some things. Uh, and one of the things I wanna point out is keeping a vertical torso and keeping the hips back all the way into the seat. Now some people will move their hips forward and lean back here. What that will immediately do is put more tension and stress on the upper chest, the clavicular portion here, and more in the anterior deltoids here. So now they're starting to press through here. They'll be able to, yes, push a little bit more weight, but all of a sudden now, it's not necessarily more of a shoulder workout. It's starting to get in the chest as well. So push those hips all the way back. Keep that vertical torso. There can be a slight arch in there in the lower back. So just keep some tension there. And when you're in this position here, try not to rotate your elbows too far outward here. Where then you're pressing where your scapula is contracted all the way back. You do want your scapula slightly retracted. So when you close in your elbows here, it's gonna stabilize the shoulder joint a lot more than if you go bring wide. It's gonna bring in a little bit of impingements in the shoulder there, kind of closing the gap there. You'll feel some tension. So kind of bring those elbows a little bit close to the body. And then as you press up, they can slightly rotate and you're gonna be elevating your scapula at that top position. It's gonna help contract the trapezius muscles and stabilize that top portion right here and then you can bring it down back to the bottom position here, keeping that neutral chin. So if you tend to find yourself leaning back here to do the shoulder press and have a hard time getting in that more vertical position, what you want to do is immediately step onto, or I should say sit onto a bench with no back support. So you're still in a seated position, but all of a sudden now you have nothing to lean back on and it's going to force you to contract the abdominals and keep that vertical torso through here. So when you're in this position, the pressing position, now, all of a sudden, if you're leaning back, there's no way to actually perform the exercise. So now you're forced into that position, 
It's gonna make the exercise a little bit harder because you're gonna have more core work. You'll have nothing really to support kind of that torso, even in the vertical position. So you're gonna contract the abdominals through that positioning, but it might help you out in the long run if you have a difficult time and you're always kind of tend to lean back to get in that position. Always start a little bit lighter when you don't have any back support too to get that positioning correct and go right through the exercise. So a few things to keep in mind, a few things to avoid. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial with the uh, seated dumbbell shoulder press, hitting those deltoids, boulder shoulders as we like to call them. And if you want to see more tutorials in the future, we're definitely going to come out with a lot more and we've done a lot in the past. So make sure you check out the catalog and to see if there's any exercises that you need to work on and any tips on. And until next time, stay buff. Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Adam Schaefer. Today we're gonna to go over a bicep dumbbell curl. The first thing that we wanna talk about when we're doing a dumbbell bicep curl is posture. Now, we're gonna start off with a standing bicep curl, although you can do these in the seated position. Now, why I like to teach them in a standing position is because I actually put my clients in a very unique stance, and there's a reason for that. Now, when you do a bicep curl, the, the main function is just flexion at the elbow. So any other movement in the rest of the body is really unnecessary and that's gonna actually take away from the work on the bicep and other muscles will take over. So the position that we get into is very important. So what that looks like is we wanna take the shoulders in a retract position. So I wanna pull the shoulder blades back. Now the reason why this is so important is already most people have this issue where they have kind of a rounded shoulder and then when they go to do bicep curls, what ends up happening is the front of their shoulder starts to kick into the movement, which is why some people actually feel this a little bit in their shoulder. So what I wanna do is I wanna retract the shoulders back, so peel the elbows back by my side when I do this bicep curl. And once I come to this position right here, my bicep is fully flexed. Any more movement, so look where that dumbbell would, would end up being right here. Any more movement from here to here is now shoulder flexion, which is not working any more of my bicep. So you don't need to take this all the way up to your chin or the top of your chest like some people do. All you wanna do is take it all the way up into full flexion and you'll feel the bicep fully flexed, the shoulder still in that retracted position. In order to get the dumbbell up any higher, I would have to roll the shoulder forward and then the shoulder takes over. We don't want that. So I'm gonna start you guys off in a standing position and we're actually gonna get into what we call a split stance. And in the split stance, I'm gonna shift my weight onto my front foot and my back foot is on my toe. Now the purpose of this and why I love to teach this to clients is because it creates a little instability. And when it creates instability, it kind of forces you into good posture. It's just an old trainer trick that we used to do because if you have somebody who's lifting dumbbells and they're rocking and they're moving, it'll throw them off balance. This kind of forces them up into good posture. So I'll take a client, I'll put them in a split stance, weights on the front foot, I'll tell them to take their shoulders in a retracted position and then the elbows by their side. I also like them to imagine you have a pen that goes through your elbow, in through your side and out the other, and that it has to move on that axis. You never want that elbow to move from that point of axis. So it stays pinned right by the side the entire movement. That's gonna keep everything in the bicep. All right, now let's talk about range of motion. Now, one of the most common mistakes that I see people doing is either shortening the range of motion up too much or going too far when they do a curl. Now, I kind of touched on this a minute ago when I talked about the position of the elbow being pinned by your side, that this is as high as you need to go up. You don't need to go any higher than this. Common mistake I see is the rocking of the elbows and the shoulders. That's too far. You don't need to curl all the way up there. Now, it doesn't mean it's wrong or it's bad. It just means that you're gonna incorporate other muscles that you may not be trying to work. And if we're trying to develop the bicep and that's our main focus, then we just wanna get right to the top and squeeze the bicep. Now the other mistake that I see people do when they do a bicep curl is they catch it at the bottom. So you see you have this about a 10 degree bend in my elbow. You can open up and fully extend the arms. Now you've heard people talk about don't lock the joints out. It is completely safe to lock the joints out if you keep tension in the muscle. So what do I mean by that? It means when I come all the way down, I don't relax my bicep and let the joints take the weight. I wanna keep the biceps tense. So this is probably where a lot of people get that 10 degree bend to where they're constantly keeping tension on the bicep. But you can actually open all the way up, fully extend, but also still be mentally concentrating, keeping tension in the bicep. So we wanna take the arm 
through its fullest range of motion, open it all the way up, and then come all the way up to a squeeze without rocking the elbow or the shoulder. So full range of motion looks just like this. Shoulders are peeled back, elbows are back, all the way up into that flex position, and I'm squeezing the bicep at the top. Right there, I got full flexion of the bicep. Any more of this is now shoulders getting involved to get there. So full range, all the way down by my side, curl all the way up, squeeze at the top. All right, now let's talk about alternating dumbbell curls or pronating or supinating the wrist while you do the curls. Now, these are great little variations that you can throw into your dumbbell curls. There's not one that's better or worse than the other, but I do like to incorporate some sort of pronation or supination in the curl, meaning this. So when I come up and I curl, so some people will start in a neutral position and then they'll come up and curl and they rotate the wrist up like leading with their pinkies as they come up and then rotate back down. Now, you're not getting any more of just the bicep work like that. You incorporate a little bit more of the brachialis when you have a neutral grip, which is just a muscle that runs underneath the bicep. You'll hear a lot of bros talk about how that makes the bicep look bigger and meatier because it's a muscle that runs underneath and then creates kind of like this, you know, size on the outside. It pushes the bicep out. So yeah, it's a great idea to either incorporate some sort of alternating and supinating every now and then, or you can just incorporate hammer curls and you can get that same effect on your brachialis. Now, the other thing is alternating the dumbbells back and forth. There's not a real big difference between doing both dumbbells together versus alternating. The only real difference is when I alternate, I come up here, this dumbbell on the other side is at rest. So I'm gonna have a little bit more energy. So I typically can lift more weight when I alternate because then I get a little bit of rest in between set versus doing both of them together. This is gonna be a little bit more challenging. I like to incorporate both into my routine. Neither one of them is better than the other. Both are great to incorporate. All right, now let's talk about how do I know if I'm doing this right or wrong? Well, first of all, you know you're doing it wrong if you don't feel it in your biceps. Now, when we're doing an isolation exercise or a single joint movement, it's pretty challenging to not feel it in the right muscle. You should feel this in the bicep. If you do feel this though in other muscles, the most common ones are probably the front of your shoulders and sometimes your traps. Now that's a dead giveaway that you're rolling the shoulders forward while you're curling and you're getting this movement and swinging with the elbows. And that's actually really common, especially when people are challenging themselves with weight. They tend to use momentum, they throw it up, the elbows rock and the shoulders get involved. Now, if you start to really notice it in the shoulders or in the traps, you know that's starting to take over the movement and you're not getting much benefit for the bicep. So when you do that, retract the shoulders, keep the elbows peeled back, and this is where I like to talk about tempo. This is where tempo becomes really important. Sure, you can do faster, slower tempos, but when I teach this movement, I like to teach a four second negative. So you resist the way down for four seconds, nice and slow and controlled till you open it all the way up, and then you come up one to two seconds. Four seconds on the way down, one to two seconds on the way up. Now when you do that, it helps control the weight, it helps you keep from swinging the dumbbells up and down and incorporating other muscles. All right. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Advanced Training Techniques. And today we're gonna to be talking about the squat. Now, the squat, we've all been told, is the king of all muscle builders when we're talking about building our quads and hamstrings and glutes, and this is true as long as we focus on good techniques. So today we're gonna talk about things to avoid, common mistakes or bad form, and some tips on how to do them the right way. So first things first, let's jump into proper body alignment. That's where I see a lot of mistakes in the gym. So we're gonna talk about our body alignment, from the ground up, starting with our feet. Throw the bar on my shoulders. You see all sorts of different foot position. You see some people with their feet narrower. You see shoulder width, which is a common one. Or sometimes you'll see some guy on YouTube squatting 600 pounds and his feet are really wide and his toes are turned out. And you say, hey, if the guy knows how to squat 600 pounds then maybe he's doing it right. Well, here's the one thing that you wanna keep in mind. There's a difference between squatting for power and squatting to build muscle. So feet nice and wide, toes turned out. It's a very powerful position. But for focusing on building muscle, we're gonna go ahead and bring our feet to about shoulder width apart. Toes turned out just slightly. So moving up to knees. 
you may have heard the saying, don't let your knees go over your toes, which would look like this. As I squat down, you can see that my knees are a couple inches out in front of my toes. You want to avoid this. So how do you do that? Well, moving up to hips or more specifically butt, we want to get your butt backwards. The reason that your knees are coming out over your toes is because you're squatting straight down. Maybe you're afraid that you're going to feel like you're going to fall backwards and that's a common fear when you first start squatting is that with some weight on your back that you're going to tip over backwards. What you want to do as you go down is drop your butt straight back and you can see now that my knees are right over my toes. So that's hips. Now the next thing, moving up to shoulders. First thing is the bar itself. I see a lot of people with his bar nice and high and sitting on the back of their neck. You don't want to do that. You want to let that bar roll back just a little bit across your back, across your traps and your shoulders. It's nice and comfortable right there. So focus on keeping it right about there. Next thing, head. Remember that wherever you look, your body's going to follow. If I look forward, my shoulders are going to come forward. We want to focus on keeping our torso nice and upright. So to do that, you got to keep your chin up. I suggest finding a spot on the wall and keep your eyes fixed there the whole time. So with our chin up, that's going to keep our torso nice and upright. Initiate the movement by dropping our butt backwards and press straight up. You see a lot of people when they squat, they'll come forward like this and that puts a lot of unnecessary stress on their back and then initiating the movement with their back instead of their legs. So you want to make sure that as you come down, drive through the heels and that's going to initiate the movement, not with your back. Now speaking of posture, one of the easiest ways that I show people how to squat the right way is a really simple trick. No weight, no bar. I want you to stick your hands straight over your head like this and then squat down. Now you can see that your torso stays nice and upright. Now this is a good way to check your torso because if you find your hands coming out in front of you like this, you're leaning too far forward. So again, you got to keep your hands above your head. It's going to force you to arch your back slightly, chin up and drive up through the heels. Now that's why a lot of people do a front squat. If I grab the bar, you're going to go ahead and rest the bar right across the front of your shoulders. This is the most common position right here. Same thing, chin up, torso upright, and drop your butt backwards. Now this forces you to stay nice and upright because if I lean forward, the bar's gonna roll off my shoulders. So it makes you keep your torso nice and upright. A lot of people also like this exercise because it focuses on your quads a little bit more. So I'm gonna leave you with one last tip. I see a lot of people that train in just a half range of motion like this. And some people say, well, hey, they're missing the full range of motion. They're not coming all the way down to at least parallel. Now this is true. So there's actually two different ways to look at this. Your quads are very strong in this upper range of motion right here. And you see a lot of bodybuilders training like this. And that's because their quads can handle that weight and they can really challenge their quads there. The problem is when you get down lower here, you're much weaker. So here's a little tip that I like to do. I actually break my squats up into two different ranges of motion. So I'll go lighter and I'll do half reps from the bottom halfway up. So a weight that I can manage that's challenging here at the bottom half. And then I'll put more weight on and I'll do the upper half of the range of motion where I'm stronger. A lot of bodybuilders you'll see just training in this upper range of the motion. The problem is you get to really work your quads by doing that. You're challenging them, but you're not working your glutes and your hamstrings as much as you should be. The glutes and the hamstrings are going to get activated when you come down nice and low. So that's why I really like to break the two up. So that's a really simple tip. And by using lighter weight in the range of motion that you can handle, you're apt to use better form. So those are my tips proper body alignment, start with the toes, focus on the knees, drop the butt back, keep your torso upright, keep your chin up, don't put the bar on your neck, 
make sure it's across your back, and make sure that you use a weight and the range of motion that you can handle. So those are some simple tips to improve your squat. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>